The opinions, viewpoints, and beliefs presented on this program do not necessarily reflect those of the management, the affiliates, and broadcast partners, or the sponsors. Listener discretion is advised. Between science and ignorance, there is filler. And Ken Bogle here for Paranormal Filler and Scarefest Radio. We are at the Ohio State Reformatory. I'm doing my first periscope of the day. Ken's already, I don't know what I'll bring. He's already filmed. But um, we just arrived. Ken is already in all of the place. I guess you can see some of it in the background there. Yeah, this, this is one of those places you see on TV that you do not, television does not do it justice. Not at all. So, uh, the plans tonight, we're probably going to have to reschedule some stuff a little bit. They're doing the magic show at 8 o'clock just to give everybody a heads up. And uh, since that's all for proprietary stuff, I'm sure we're not going to be able to periscope it. So we'll, um, uh, we will be broadcasting live uh, on and off tonight. We'll probably try to record some stuff to broadcast at 8 p.m. So we probably won't be live. Somebody said I'm beautiful. Yeah, or you, of course you It are. could be Ken. I don't know. <laughs> Somebody in the frame, frame is beautiful. Um uh, Anyway, so that's uh, that's the plans. But we uh, once we get going on the ghost hunt, uh, watch our Twitter feeds. At once an hour, we are going to be uh, trying to either do um, a radio or periscope. And I have this nifty little light rig that Ken hasn't seen yet uh, that will let us do it in the dark on our cell phones. So it's very uh, nice. Yeah. <laughs> it's very complicated, involving a couple of flashlights, and it's. But anyway, I made it, so that makes it mine. <laughs> uh, so right now, they told us to check in. I doubt there's anybody check in yet. They uh, had us locked out of the gate when we showed up. But uh, we were not, this time I was not the first person to pull in. Uh, some of the uh, other people from the uh, group um, were also waiting at the gate. Yeah. Here. yeah. So, yeah. Uh, everybody, uh, stay tuned tonight. Watch us on Twitter. Uh, follow Ken Boggle at Ken Boggle. Uh, of course, if you're Pulled this up. You're already following I Hunt Ghost, but the Orf just on Periscope and you see me. But we will be trying to do this from time to time, and maybe even be more interesting. Uh, <laughs> incidentally, this will be brought to you live from Mansfield, Ohio, home of Ohio's only life size wax museum. Wes and I are going to prison together, as most of you have probably already guessed. It was only a moment of. It was only a matter of time. But here we are finally in a prison together. Seems fitting, doesn't it? Honestly, karma does catch up with you. It does. So, um, everybody, uh, keep watching for later, and thanks for tuning in right now. Paranormal Filler. Hello, friends. Are you exhausted with life? Resent your children? Maybe your husband is cheating on you. Get yourself a tarot reading with Ken Boggle. He can provide you with the clarity, guidance, and answers you need. That's tarotbyken.com. He makes things seem less shitty. Welcome to Scarefest Radio and Paranormal Fillers Night at Lockdown 2016 at the Ohio State Reformatory. I'm Wes Forsyth. I'm Ken Vogel. And we're here at the prison, and so far, Ken has just been aghast. I am taken back by the magnitude of the building. It's humongous, and also at how beautiful it is. It, 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 from the outside, it's it's funny that the such beauty outside can hide so much, we'll call it ugliness inside. You've yeah. not got to see the ugly part of the building, the actual um, uh, cells and where the prisoners were. Probably the ugliest thing we've seen so far, uh, we went up to the chapel. I wanted to see it, and they actually have cells adjacent to the chapel, I guess, for the um, 
for those inmates that they could not trust to sit through church. Couldn't trust them, but they loved Jesus, so... So, and um, if you if you weren't watching on Periscope, you'll know that we are in Mansfield, Ohio, doing all of this uh, live broadcasting tonight from Lockdown 2016. Mansfield, Ohio, home of Ohio's only life-size wax museum. That's right. We are trying to find out if the museum is life-size or the actual wax figures are life-size or... Um, and then the alternative is, does that mean that Ohio is known otherwise for miniature wax? Well, yeah. I would assume so, based on the sign. And, you know, it's the Bible walk. Mm-hmm. Well, that's true. Yes, uh, we, uh, we uh, did, uh, Ken did want to take the Bible walk. As you pull in, there's a big sign that says Bible walk. And I don't know mean if that means from that sign you should walk, or if you follow the sign, there is a walk at the end of it. I'm not sure, but I want to go. Well... You work on that, okay? And let me know how that works out. Okay, for you. I'll do. It. Yeah, um, but uh, we're here's the plans for tonight, people. We'll, we're going to do um, segments. Uh, so at any given time, just all I can tell you is watch our Twitter feeds. Uh, he's at Ken Boggle. I'm at iHuntGhost.com. Uh, do a search for West Forsyth. That works too. Probably if you're listening to this, you're already following me anyway. The um, we're going to do uh, short segments tonight. Most of the segments will probably be. 15 minutes long. Uh, we are going to do a lot of Periscope, a lot of video for the for the uh, uh, audience. But the uh, the catch is, the way this, Chris Dedman has this set up where it's going to be an active night as far as moving around. So we're not going to have a lot of sit around time just to sit and talk to you. Um, so we're going to do a lot of it on the fly. Then once I get home, then I get to actually edit it all together for a, um, a cohesive product to present to the listening audience from this amazing experience and don't forget the pictures because we're posting the pictures on twitter too west yes. uh, behind the pulpit right there in the chapel of the ohio state reformatory and uh, it. and and, uh, and uh, yeah he he said uh let's get your picture in here and i said well i'll get behind the pulpit and then i stared longingly off into the beyond it just came to me the um uh, i've already impressed ken with my camera rig that's so amazing he he says i should patent this and the problem is it's a bunch of stuff that other people invented that i just happen to think to take together so yeah i think let's put one together let's put a patent on it and let's make you a millionaire now you know what i do have to figure out ken okay now Pete, i realize we're not doing periscope i'll make, i'll demonstrate this on periscope later i want one of those point of view cameras like josh gates uses where okay. it so I'm thinking, how can I get one of these attached to my belt to hold my cell phone out in front of me and not look like a penis? Well, but... because that's exactly what it looks like. <laughs> well, maybe yours. But, <laughs> but um, and uh, Ken's already expressed the um, the uh, inclination not to go to the shower room. Right. Uh, I've seen Shawshank Redemption. I know what happened in there. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. and you know, if, if any of these are the original ghosts... Um, yeah, I told Ken, you might just be the most popular inmate in the prison tonight. High school all over again. <laughs> the uh, um, interesting point um, on Twitter today, uh, Carol, you asked if uh, I thought this was a tourist ghost situation. Not only do I now fully believe it, the people that do the tours believe it. And, uh, and what are parts of the prison that when they were originally hunting... When they first started ghost hunting here, there were parts of the prison that were basically, pardon the expression, dead. Right. Uh, no evidence coming out of. And because of some of the TV shows that came in that emphasized events in these areas of the prison, now those areas are active. Mm. So the theory is that these wandering tourist ghosts, as I call them, have been walking around waiting for somebody to say, hey, I want to talk to the ghost of so-and-so who died in this cell and they come forward and presto we have an active haunt it's almost like a, the expectation of it has been imprinted on the space you know just yeah, the we, expectation of yeah, it we the it's arguable whether the ghost just picks up on the people yelling give me an evp or whether or not they actually pick up on the emotion left behind in an area but the way they said they debunked uh, they get they have this one cell in particular that's very very active and everybody talks to this one particular inmate that used to be here. Catch is, they ask for his um, prisoner number. Right. And the prisoner number on the EVPs 
They get it. Never been close. So you got to ask yourself, like, uh, are are we just trying so hard that we're putting stuff where uh, where there is nothing, and we're just we just want so badly to be uh, in the presence of the paranormal that we are in fact bringing our own ghosts with us? Well, we in a place like this, we do want to make it clear they started the go, the place they start the reason they started hunting here was because there were ghosts. So I don't want to give anybody the impression that we're we've created a haunted location. Right. I like to think of it as we've just uh, had a shift change. Okay. On, okay. I mean, for for the typical for the typical ghost hunter, I would say a ghost is a ghost is a ghost. Right. Right. You know, I don't I don't think anybody's going to care if they get the EVP. Most ghost hunters are not going to care if it's authentically grandma cell number or whatever you know whatever. Right. So um, but that that is the answer to Carol's question. We do believe this is a tourist ghost situation. Right. And on top of that, there's so many, there's so much that goes into this building, even in, in the ground itself, even like even before this prison was built, uh, the, the, the ground itself has got some sort of uh, connection to the paranormal. There's some sort of spirit here always. So it's, I'm interested to get into the depths of the building and see the cells and to see the darker parts. Cause the outside and what I've seen so far has been beautiful. Lake, geese. There were like 30 freaking geese out there. Twirly gigs? I mean, twirly gigs, which will be featured on Wes's t- Twitter, you know? Yeah, it was quite, yeah, the twirly gigs give the prison a festive feel. Yeah. Um, Jolly. Yeah. Welcome to prison. But we don't, we, and I, we're, I'm being flippant here. I don't want to downplay the emotion, the, the experience that people had in this building. It's got a lot of history. It's, um, I, I fully believe from all the stories that I've been told that it's haunted. Ken made the comment just as soon as we pulled in the parking lot, we're being watched. Yeah. And um, the only thing I picked up on when I tried to tune in on, I felt like we were being watched, but not from the windows. It was just like a crowd was out front, out front, yeah. wanting to see what was going on tonight. Yeah. yeah. But, you know, then they tell us that, and there are no lack of windows in this building there's just everywhere you look there's a window somebody is standing there checking you out but we were told that this is like the very front of it was where like the wardens and the the uh, officers had their den and yeah you had you would have had the wardens quarters the assistant wardens quarters and um uh the library the offices and Rosalind Bound this is here Rosalind Hello. Bound is Hello. joining Hello. us she is one of the guests at tonight's event yes i am one of these special guests. Extra special. <laughs> Very <laughs> special. Yeah. Uh, I have a joke that goes along with that, but I'm, I'm, I'm told that I offend too many people on the radio. So, uh, <laughs> Special Olympics. Uh, <laughs> Ouch. Whatever somebody says is special. I don't. My so. mama says I'm special. Okay, well. Are you calling my mama a liar? No, I would okay. never say anything to uh, disparage your mother. I'm popular with the mother crowd <laughs> for some popular. reason. Very popular. Yes, I, uh, yeah. my, my fan base for some reason kicks in at 550 ish. <laughs> I, uh, probably because I piss off all the Zach Bagans fans, uh, at some point or another. Oh. And, uh, not a hard thing to do. Not and, well, and, and, and I, and I like, it's, I like the show. I just, I don't know how to explain it. I just, I, you know, paranormal reality TV is so overdone. <laughs> yes. Overproduced. Overproduced. Would yes, be a good it is. It is. Um, I don't watch much TV, so honestly, I don't know what's really out there right now that people are watching. But as a whole, yeah, I absolutely agree with you. I'd be, um. Watching, okay, and I've talked about this on the radio, so it's not like I'm breaking new ground here. My objection, first of all, is not to any of the Ghost Adventures crew. I believe they are passionate about what they do. They're good men. They are good men. They 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 believe what they do. They This has affected them personally. I have no doubt. So don't think that's where I'm going with this. What I'm actually, the annoying part, is watching when they go to the conventions and seeing teenage girls scream. <laughs> it's like the Beatles. It's yes. Like the Beatles. Well, you can't really control that. And, no, you can't. You know, it's, it, that's the thing. When you're kind of a dynamic personality, everybody sort of wants to have some sort of contact with that, right. have a relationship with that. And I, and I think that's what it is with those guys. I, get, I, I guess the reason I set them out aside 
is because everybody I meet in the paranormal world is very, very real. Aaron Goodwin, great guy. Met, heck, we met on the smoking lounge. I mean, he's just, he's a real guy. And everybody I meet in the paranormal have a passion. Uh, all the TV shows, forget about what you may think is real and what is not. The people I have met, by and large, know their stuff. They're lucky enough to be doing what they are passionate about. Whether, yeah. you, whether you like the way it comes across on TV or not, it's their dream. I completely agree. And that's the thing. If you, you know, it's easy to, to look at people on TV and have a certain perception of them. And I don't, I don't know Zach. I don't know Aaron. I don't, I don't know them personally. I do know Jay, um, Jay Wasley. Mm-hmm. And you talk to him about the paranormal and within five seconds you realize this is somebody who is truly passionate. Yeah, absolutely. About this field. But, and they, what they are doing, it really is a labor of love. Now, you know, there's a lot of opinions in this field on how we should approach things. Um, or how paranormal entertainment should be run, but there's no denying that what they're doing, they they are following their passion but, but and they're I, doing it their way. Well, like and, that's uh, what tickles me. I really is, respect that, and they're open and honest about it. Right. There's, there's what well, tickles me is I, do I, I don't see, I don't it. see young women screaming when Jason Hall's okay. There's the room. <laughs> now I will say though, now I did an event in Woodbridge, New Jersey. Now, I, I live in South Jersey mm-hmm. down near Philly. Woodbridge is about an hour and a half north, and we did an event about four weeks ago, Power Unity Fest. And um, Amy Allen was there. Mm-hmm. And I had worked with her a couple of years ago. We did an event up at uh, Lake George, New York, um, Para History Con. Uh, so I'd worked with her before, but didn't really know her. Well, at this event, I have never seen this at a paranormal convention. Just a standard Paracon, not a Comic-Con where there's a huge crowd. Right. Your standard couple hundred people paranormal convention crowd. There was a line, maybe 15, 20 deep, all day, of people waiting to meet. Amy, I have never seen I, it, and it was fabulous. Now, I'm going to tell you, it I, was bl- fabulous. I absolutely believe it, because she was on my show almost two years ago. Yeah. To the date. I still, on the average week, more people will go back and replay that episode than the one I recorded this week. Yeah, I believe it. I mean, that's, I, mean uh, I don't know what it is. Popular. I mean, I think there's a lot of factors, obviously, and then you just see her, and there's this, this light in her. Mm-hmm. She's very approachable, very nice woman. Um, but yeah, people stood all line all day to meet her and they walked away really satisfied with their encounter. Cause that's the other thing. Yeah, yeah. People are excited to see somebody excited to meet them. Look at the, look at their faces when they're in line and then look at them when they walk away. Did they have a satisfactory encounter? And all of these people walked away looking very happy to have met her and she took time with each and every one of them. It was really nice. And I think that's one of the reasons people respond really well to you. Is because oh, thank I've never you. seen anybody go by you or leave from uh, meeting you or speaking with you without a smile on their face or a spring in their step. I think that's why people are drawn to you. I appreciate that. And it's I think it's probably fair to warn people that it's hard to walk away from me without getting a hug. Oh, the because best I'm a hugs, serial hugger. The best hug. <laughs> yes, but, but on TV... On Ghost Hunters Academy, <laughs> she played the bitch. Womp, womp, womp. <laughs> I was edited to be a bitch. The funny thing is, I came into that as an experienced paranormal investigator who came from a team. Um, I was assistant director of a team of about 30, 35 people, and we really were a surrogate family. You know, we were a team. Everybody wanted to work together and achieve together. And that was actually the approach I took to this competition, which was ridiculous. I mean, it's a competition, but... I'm the one telling the other people, listen, I might be doing well this week, but next week it might be you. You know, if I was what they wanted, they would have cast eight people that were just like me. Like, we all have an equal chance to win. Let's all come in, do our best. And, you know, if I'm going to win, it's not going to be because I drag others down. It's going to be because I fall to the bottom. And that's the end of it. So, yeah, I came in with a team approach, which really isn't the most strategic way to approach a competition. (laughs) But you know what? I didn't want to win it as badly as other people did, and that's okay. It wasn't for me. But uh But since then I've seen you at multiple events. It doesn't go and notice that you were a favorite. Of the people who come and and see you, you're like one of the I mean, you're like a, one of the headliners. I, I do hear people tell me that I was the one they were rooting for. I mean, I guess everybody hears that, but it's always gratifying to hear because again, you go on, you do your best, you be who you are, but you have no control over how you're edited. You have no control over the story they craft around you I after remember, the fact. I remember and when you were on, and I, not, I might actually have fallen into that category of people rooting for you, but I think the what sticks in my mind was you were the one of the people that when you when they handed you the EMF meter, 
you could see the, your, the look in your eyes like, please don't explain to me for the <laughs> thousandth time how to use an EMF meter. You could tell that you had handled the equipment before. Uh, yeah. To, uh, I had. But so, that was the other thing, though. We all came from varying levels of experience. So mm-hmm. it was a matter of what they were looking for. You know, it was a matter of finding somebody. It wasn't a who's the best ghost hunter competition. It was who's the best fit for an existing team and an existing television show competition. And that was another thing that you can't walk away, you know, with your feelings hurt or your pride or ego because, no, I didn't lose because I was lesser. I just wasn't the right fit. And I'm probably not. You know what? I'm a strong personality. I'm very nice, but I know who I am and what I want and what I'm willing to do. And maybe I wasn't the fit for that team. If you were to be offered, if you were to be offered another spot in either a a different team on television or a show of your own, would you do it? I would, but it would have to be the right opportunity. I mean, I did learn a lot of lessons from being a part of the Pilgrim Films family. Um, I learned that there were things that I would approach differently, that I would be more cautious about moving forward with a contract. Um, but, yeah, it would have to be the right fit. Because if, if I'm on board and I'm on the team, then I'm endorsing it. I am throwing everything I have in my entire reputation, which I've worked very hard to rebuild after being misrepresented on a TV show. So, yeah, my reputation and my my personal brand is all I have. So I'm very, very careful about where I'm willing to associate that. And you came to our table anyway. I That's know. Wonderful. Well, this is a charity yeah. event. <laughs> and, we, and we look like we need charity. Um, now, on, to, on a note about tonight. Now, I have not seen uh, Nick and Deb Lance. Did, did you know if they no, they're thoughts? actually not going to be able to make it oh. this time. Yeah, unfortunately. Well, you, are, you know what that means? What? You're sitting at the psychic table. Ooh. For the event. I mean, this is Ooh. <laughs> whatever we come up with as far as it goes, baby. Yeah, we're bringing the psychic light. Nice. Yeah, well, well, that's pretty exciting. We're bringing psychic back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, um, so our impressions will be tainting. <laughs> the investigations wow. of the general public. That's your disclaimer, guys. So what are you excited about doing tonight? What what rooms are you excited to see? And like, what is exciting Roslyn about this evening? Well, what's weird about me is, you know, I, I've done this for a long time. I've done hundreds of investigations all over the country, different types of buildings, private residences. I love having experiences. But what I love even more, I mean, absolutely nothing paranormal could happen tonight and i'm still so happy to be in this environment Mm -hmm. you know this i love the beauty of the architecture i love the the beauty of the crumbling you know it's a very clean museum quality location unlike some other prisons that are abandoned in the the country but it also has you know the peeling paint and the rusty bars and i love being immersed in that i love the history i love the uh the shawshank redemption connection so for me just being here um for a good cause with good people in this amazing location that's what I'm most looking forward to. See, now, I enjoy uh, the public uh, at the time we're actually recording this, uh, just to let you know, this is not completely live, because Reed Masterson is doing magic uh, at, at the time slot we had scheduled. So, that being said, um, the um, I enjoy these hunts because I don't get out and do field work like I used to. I'd like to see what people are actually relying on. Now, even more so than that, I like to be able to for them to tell me why they're relying on it. So I'm still a hard sell, but uh, but I do like I like seeing if they're going to be pulling the blinky lights out of their mm. their bags. I, I like to see what people are relying on. Sometimes I've been very impressed. Um, I mean, I've seen people pull out video equipment, portable video equipment the size of a laptop. They did full spectrum analysis of the room, sure. and I've also seen them pull out the little periscope things that just light off in different directions that, to me, have no meaning whatsoever. Um, but even if you're going to use that, I don't. I, that's fine. Just have a game plan, understand what it's measuring, and uh, that well, happens. I'll tell you my approach, and I kind of, <laughs> I hate to like kind of warn people. I like I'm kind of a boring ghost hunter for these types of things because. I go low tech when I do investigations mm-hmm. like this. So really, I'm in there with my voice recorder, um, a flashlight, which I don't use as a communication device. I use it as a illumination device. Now, I am willing to use my flashlight as a communication device. Please I do know. not. If I can find a ghost that can push that button. Fair enough. <laughs> the walls will be bleeding. But, you know, again, you know, it's capturing evidence is great. But, again, it's all, number one, potential evidence. Number two, 
no matter what you present, people are going to be skeptical, which they should be. But I don't care what you capture. You're not convincing people unless they want to be convinced. Sure. You know, so I don't go for the evidence as much as I'm here to have an experience. See, so that's no, what I'm hoping no, to walk I away would, with. I would never... And we're joined now by Paul Bradford and Brian J. Kennel. Would you like an autographed copy of that picture, just sir? <laughs> We we got a whole table full of famous, more people, more famous than me. They can name it. all of us who sign it. Um, I don't even know what I was talking about. Now. <laughs> well, we were talking about equipment, but then oh, we yeah. then, then these handsome gentlemen come by and and, and, and want to say hello. Here's Brian J. Cano. We like being Paul Negro. Bradford. Brian, hello. Hello. How's it going, guys? And um, how many times have you been here? I know. Gosh. Uh, I can't count the number of times I've been here to Mansfield or Ohio State or as I like to think of Shawshank. But anytime I'm here, I'm kind of in a, in a non-investigative uh, uh, mode. Although tonight we are going to be uh, doing some some small tours and some uh, some of the work. So, um, are you ever surprised, Brian, with the amount of times you've been here? Are you ever shocked by something new that's happened every time, or does it become kind of a routine for you? Every time that I'm here is a new time. There's fresh experiences and new things to reveal themselves. Uh, it depends on my uh, frame of mind, I suppose. Uh, when I'm here right now for charity events, uh, for Unity, A Journey of Hope, my mindset is, hey, let's have some fun. Let's raise some money for a great charity. And I, I, I just enjoy doing it here. I mean, we could be at a Knights of Columbus place in the middle of nowhere, but we're here at Ohio State Reformatory, and I just I love being here. Well, we're um, a uh, little bit over twenty minutes into the uh, into the hour. We're going to close up shop now. We're going to get ready. Uh, it's getting noisy in here. They, they're actually letting people into the building now. So, um, everybody, uh, watch the Twitter feeds for the live recordings that we'll be doing tonight, and then I'll put together an actual show out of it. And you can listen to that on the affiliates, uh, AMFM twenty four seven, Dark Matter, Live Paranormal, um, Diversity Broadcasting, all those. So, um, stay tuned. Yes, right, that is tuned. very well put. More coming soon. And remember, this is coming to you live from Mansfield, Ohio, home of the only life-size <laughs> wax museum in the state of Ohio. Learn the method at Bobby Mackey's. With Brian J. Cano. Sunday, July 24th. Learn investigating techniques, participate in experiments, and come experience Bobby Mackey's firsthand. Join Brian as he explores the infamous Bobby Mackey's music world for the first time. His method tour focuses on the process, philosophy, and execution of paranormal investigating and is suitable for novices and veterans alike. Brian's goal is to take each attendee and alter their perspectives with critical thinking, basic techniques, and logic. Event highlights will be broadcast live by me, Wes Forsyth of Paranormal Filler. Be interviewed about your experiences as they happen. For more information, go to NeverStopSearching.com. That's The Method with Brian J. Cano, Sunday, July 24th. Hello everyone, uh, Wes and Ken at Ohio State Reformatory. We're pretty close to the top of the hour, so we feel pretty safe. That's when the uh, groups will be moving around, so we won't interrupt any of the investigations. Now, Ken and I did not get uh, assigned to a spe specific area. They just pretty much said, wander, have fun, <laughs> just turn us loose in the building. So we've been exploring uh, what would be called the uh, East Cell Block. And we've had some interesting... Experiences. Experiences. Yeah. I'd call it uh, based uh, on feelings, shadow play. Ken keeps hearing stuff. I don't hear anything. I think I'm going deaf. Uh, <laughs> but uh, they're like, did you hear that? I'm like, I wasn't listening. I I, there were three different circumstances. I heard one sounded like a guard calling out. Um, the other, t uh, the most, the most recent was uh, were footsteps. Um, there has been some contamination because there are groups going back and forth. Like we heard, like what sounded like a bottle dropping mm -hmm. and a couple of things. But then I walked by, by, uh, by a particular cell. I, I think it was on uh, level. It was on level six, 
And um, I just stopped and I, I, I asked for a sign that someone was in there. And no more than three seconds later, I heard what sounded like someone dropping a pebble on the floor. Now, it is a, it's almost derelict in those cells. They're really in bad shape. So uh, was it paranormal? I don't know, but it scared the hell out of me. Now, um, we've, a couple times we've, uh, we've stopped uh, to, I would call it, tune in on the situation, tune in on the building. We've gotten very similar um, results as far as what we're sensing. The um, we've seen some interesting shadow play. Ken actually, now in, we were on. I guess this was all on the top floor. Now on the one side, Ken was seeing shadow play at the end of the hallway. I could not see it because I could not get my eyes to focus past probably thirty or forty foot out. Everything down that. Um, cell block was a blur to me mm. then when we walked around the corner looking the same direction then all of a sudden I could see all the way to the end Right, and that's when I started focusing on the light which I I don't, I don't want to say it was psychic or paranormal I'm just not sure The there was a little bit more ambient light at the very end of the cell block mm. which created an effect but as I looked at that light it seemed to me like the light was expanding. You know, the light never changed because it's just very little. Right. You can you can just barely see where you're going. But the light it was like the light was expanding, and then that's where I was showing you. I was trying to zoom in on just a couple of cells there. Yeah. And uh, the one that um, you kind of noticed that I forget what you said about the energy in it, but to me. Well, before we even went there, I said something good or something bad has happened right here. I don't know which, but there was something. There was a shift as we passed uh, that part of the the prison. But um, but anyway, we're we're having a good time. We're and just getting started. So uh, we're. I'm hoping now as people start shifting around. I think um, what time do we eat? Midnight. Midnight. Yeah. Okay. <coughs> Excuse me. After we. Um, reach a certain point I actually want to follow some of the groups around and just kind of observe versus what we're doing now which we're actually we're actually getting to explore but at the same time the, the places that we want to go and some of the things we're trying to keep quiet <laughs> unlike other people in the building <laughs> uh, so that we don't you know uh, create an undue contamination to, to the paying customers which we've done a pretty good job at. I think so. We've, we've not kind being of, disruptive. Right. We've kind of stayed away. Well, for one thing, we went six floors up, and everybody else has been on the ground level. I haven't figured that out, <laughs> out yet. They didn't. None of, none of them even caught up to us until we reached, what is the chapel on the fourth, I think. Fourth, fourth, le- fourth yeah, fourth level. level. And we think an entire group, we were standing 10 foot from the door. We think an entire group walked past us and did not even see didn't us. Didn't even see us there. <laughs> but you, there was one time that, um, and the the cells have been sort of pretty well lit, or at least your eyes acclimate to the ability to see what's inside of them, bunks or a sink or a commode. But there was one particular cell that Wes walked into, and it just disappeared. It was the most, it was it, the darkest cell in the whole place. It was a neat effect because now the cells on either side of it were dark, mm. but you could see, uh, you know, you could see your hand in front of your face basically. But once you put your hand in this one particular, and maybe the light was just perfect, maybe it was completely blocked off right. from the ambient light. Right. But when you stuck your hand inside that cell, it disappeared. You couldn't even see your fingers. You couldn't see an outline. There was it was just dark black. But, but interestingly enough, and, I, and I'm also trying to approach this from a metaphysical level. As far as going in there, I didn't really notice. In other words, the effect was neat, but I can't say that. I felt anything there to uh, to create the effect. Now, the first experiences I had, we were just getting started. I guess that would have put us on the first, second. I think we went, do we even start on the first level or do we move up one right away? I think we moved up one. I think we went directly yeah. to two. A few cells in, I was looking in all the cells we went by, and I came across one cell that I could not focus my eyes in. Yeah. That was the one I told you. Everything's right. foggy and blurry and wavy. Right. 
Right. And I was trying to explain it by the, the light coming in through the bars and everything, but all the other cells I could see fine. And that and it's over level, so it actually gets some ambient light from right. outside. You can see in it, but that it was it just like it had a it was like you were looking through a curtain. Like it had a texture. Yeah. Yeah. And um, I went in after Wes came out, and you could feel what I felt to be a temperature, a slight, very slight temperature change. I wouldn't say it's paranormal, but, you know, it's something to note. But um, you could definitely feel um, uh, an energy or like um, uh, like you were, you were standing next to somebody who was right up on you. You know, that's just like you weren't the only person in the cell, even though Wes went in alone and then I went in alone. Uh, it felt like there was someone else with you. But um, thus far, we've not we've not had an intense experience. It's been very interesting, though. Mm. Um, and uh, although I, I, Ken does like for me to walk out in front for whatever reason. Uh, I prefer like, to be in the back. Uh, appara- apparently... It, you know, the, the, there's no chance of the ghost running up behind him. You know, they're they're going to, it's going to be, if, if anything happens, it's going to be a front on attack. attack. It's going to be right. a full frontal attack. Right, right. And because, uh, because, you know, nothing paranormal right. can sneak up behind you. Right. Um, I, I, now, I'll tell you, I do have to get with uh, uh, Masterson. Next time I'm at a place like this where he does his magic show. Mm. Because he did not, the first segment he did was his bird act. And it was really neat. He actually, he fooled Ken. Yeah, Ken, very Where'd the bird go? Where'd the bird go? <laughs> and I'm like, well, I kind of, from our angle, you could see because we were practically backstage. <laughs> I, I had no I idea. I did not, I did not ruin it for Ken. He still thinks magic exists. Yes, um, yes. But I actually think it would be the neatest radio thing to have a live magical act on the radio I'll just sit there and describe describe what's happening <laughs> he's taking his glove off I, it may be the first time it's ever been done I probably would be the last <laughs> but, <laughs> but just like to tell people the bird's gone right now there's a bird there's a bird it's a it's a ping pong ball nope it's a bird so anyway but uh, yeah we did uh, he he traveled light I think he only had what was it four, four or five four, four yeah. yeah if he only had four of his pigeons I mean doves <laughs> with him uh, but he, he, he did put on a good show and you can tell he rushed it to get it in the time that uh, that he was allotted mm-hmm. but we had a lot of fun there and uh, he's good at what he does yes definitely very good and so is Ashton and I've I mean, I got right up on her, and I, I can't think of better complexion I've ever seen in my life. She's got skin like an alabaster goddess. <laughs> wow. This man, I'll tell you what. I am going to tell all of the straight men that are listening to the show, it is a good thing this guy is gay <laughs> because he has had women swooning over him because he comes up with these things. Alabaster skin. He told he told one of my friends uh, that she was the most beautiful woman he had ever seen in his life, or some yeah. god awful crap like that. And, and her smile was better than Julia Roberts. Yes. Um, yeah. Uh, which, uh, you know, me, I'm into passing comedy. Oh, that pr- I know. I can't remember the name of the pretty woman over there. Well, then I didn't remember it. But anyway, that's what it's. But uh, gentlemen, we can learn a lot. From, from Mr. Ken Bottle <laughs> as far as getting women to uh, swoon. Uh, so I think uh, I told someone they smell good before they even. I'm like, well, that was somebody. Yeah, that was like somebody that we just randomly ran into. <laughs> just walked by and I was like, my God, you smell good. <laughs> she seemed more surprised. Yeah. Than, uh, I think it was like, oh, there's a creepy guy <laughs> smelling me. But. Um, so anyway, that's where we are. Uh, we will be doing some more segments tonight so I, for me to piece together. But um, everybody, I wish you could be here. And we probably, uh, if we actually get with a group where we could do some video and not, I, I would love to video some of the groups um, uh, investigating. But we don't want to just be walking down the hallway and flash. I mean, well, it's kind of boring for you uh, because the, the chances of something paranormal jumping out in front of us. Slim. Slim tonight. Yeah. So, um. Uh, But that's where we are, and everybody, uh, thanks for checking out this segment. You're listening to Scarefest Radio and Paranormal Filler live at Ohio State Reformatory.
Paranormal 